Hello. Hello, Alex. Hello. <laughs> yes, it's me. Hi. Oh, Hi. OK, thank you. How are you? I I'm very well, thank you. Yes, and yourself? Yes, uh, not a very good day, but never mind. I just thought... No, no. It's supposed to brighten up later, apparently. Oh, good. Good. Hope it, hope it yeah. does. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I don't know. I don't know your name. Um, it's, I don't think it's Robert. Robert Skinner. Oh, hello, Robert. Nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, how can I help you? I mean, you say you've got hold of the um, the publication Enjoy Life Forever, and you had a few questions about it. Yes. Yeah. Well. Um, <clears throat> um, yes. Um, chapter Chapter Six. The summary right. of chapter six on page 28, it's, it's only two lines. It says, Jehovah created the universe and all life, mm -hmm. which obviously I would agree with. You'd be crazy if you didn't. Uh, Jehovah yeah. has to be the creator. Um, that's clarified more, more clearly for me in a verse that's pertinent to me. I used to be a oneness Pentecostal in the 1980s. I got involved in a very extreme form of Pentecostalism um, All right. and I got out of that movement and this was one of the verses that helped me out uh -huh. um, where it says Lord in my new King James Bible I'll read Jehovah it's Isaiah chapter 44 verse 24 and notice that Jehovah creates all alone and by himself he doesn't have any helpers yeah. thus says Jehovah your Redeemer and he who formed you from the womb I am Jehovah who makes all things, who stretches out the heavens all alone, who spreads abroad the earth by myself. So Jehovah is the creator, and Jehovah creates, quote, all alone and by myself. Yes. When we go to the New Testament, though, um, the Father creates through the Son. Mm. So in Hebrews 1, 1 to 2, we know God in Hebrews 1, 1 refers to the Father because we read his Son in verse 2. So the words his Son implies that God in verse 1 is a reference to Father. Right. Um, it says, God who at various times and in different ways spoke in times past to the fathers by the prophets has in these last days spoken to us by his Son whom he has appointed heir of all things through whom also he made the worlds. Through whom also he made the worlds. So the Father made the worlds through the Son. So as Jehovah creates all alone and by myself in Isaiah chapter 44 verse 24, surely this is saying that Jehovah is not just the Father, but Jehovah must be the Creator who is Father and Son. And elsewhere, I won't go on, on to those other verses that talk about the Holy Spirit being Creator, Job 33, 4, Genesis 1, 2, and so on. your conclusion then from that well i've just i've just i've just told you i mean isaiah your book says let me go back to your book verse 28 summary jehovah created the universe and all life mm -hmm. we both agree with that yes right isaiah chapter 44 verse 24 says jehovah is our redeemer jehovah is the creator Jehovah created all alone. Mm -hmm. Nobody was with him. Oh, and, right, yeah. Je uh, and Jehovah created by myself. Right. We agree on that. Jehovah is redeemer. Jehovah is creator. Jehovah creates all alone. Jehovah creates by myself. Agreed? Yeah, I, I, can, I can see where you're, what, what you're coming to. That basically, you subscribe to the Trinity doctrine, yes? Yes. Are we right in saying that? Yes. Yes. Uh, and you, and, and you know that we we see them as separate. Well, uh, Christ and uh, Jehovah certainly as separate persons, and the Holy Holy Spirit is God's active force. Yeah, but what? I does... mean, that is, that is our understanding of the uh, yeah but, the scriptures. Yeah, but it's best to surely start with the Bible and try and make your understanding fit the Bible, not start yeah. with your understanding and then shoehorn uh -huh. Bible verses to fit your understanding, 
or your latest understanding if it changes over time with light getting brighter and brighter. Doesn't right. Hebrews 1 2, which says that God the Father created the universe, it says worlds here, it's actually aeonios, it's time itself. So it means everything yeah. within time. Okay, basically the, the Hebrews creation. Hebrews 1 verse 2, you're talking about, yes? Yes, I've mentioned that three times, yeah. Isn't Hebrews 1 verse 2 that says that God the Father created the universe or aeonios, time itself, everything within time? God the Father created through his Son, wouldn't that mean that the Father and the Son are the Jehovah mentioned in Isaiah 44, 24, and also in your book? Because your book says, on page 28, Jehovah created the universe and all life. So as the Son is the creator, wouldn't that make the Son Jehovah? Well, I mean, the Son is the firstborn of all creation, isn't he? So uh, in Colossians, I think that's how he describes him. So the sun had a beginning. I mean, in uh, in um, Proverbs it talks about um, wisdom personified, and uh, that uh, is a reference to, to Jesus. And uh, because I mean, wisdom was um, created. I, 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 I won't accept anything you say to me unless it's read from the Bible. I don't accept paraphrases because if you've spoken to enough Mormons and Seventh Day Adventists and Pentecostal preachers you'll understand that they can talk to you for hours without actually getting a Bible out and reading the Bible. They just talk in paraphrase. And they're oh, okay. quote, part okay. quoting bits of proof texts here, there and everywhere. Now, look, I'm happy to go to Colossians 1.15. I'm happy to go to Proverbs 8.30. I don't think these verses are relevant. I think they're completely wrenched out of context. Could you just address, before you go there, Hebrews 1.2? Is Hebrews 1.2 saying that the Father created the universe through his Son? Yes or no? Hang on, let me just go back there. Yeah, thank you. Hebrews 1 verse 2. I'm reading this from the um, New World Translation. Uh, <clears throat> now, at the end of these days, he has spoken to us by means of a son, whom he appointed heir of all things, and through whom he made the system of things, or we've got a little uh, asterisk there, alternative reading, ages. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think, I, I, my understanding of that is that uh, G Jesus was God's agent, if you like, through whom, um, apart from himself, all other things were created. D is Jesus, did, did Jesus create? He um, acted as God's agent in, in the uh, create, creating of all things, yes. So, and, and when he did that, was he creating... Did, um, did did Jesus create the universe? Well, no, God is the creator of all things, but with Jesus as his agent in, in, in doing so. I mean, so did Jesus God, create? God, God created, I mean, all the time when <laughs> Jesus didn't exist, and, and, and then God created Jesus, the firstborn of all creation. Uh, that's taken out of context. Can we just, can, can we just, we, we have to go to the verse and look at it. And that's taken out of context. It does not mean Jesus is first created. That's proto uh, uh, Okay, Robert. proto well, 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 sorry, I, 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 right. I, I don't want to get into a, an argument or a debate. Yeah. Really. I just thought you were interested in, uh, um, uh, you know, our, our publication and wanted some help with it. But really, if it's just to challenge um, my faith, then, well, you know, there's a little point because I'm, I'm clearly not going to... Uh, um, persuade you, and then you're not going to persuade me. So, really, I mean, if that's the extent of our sort of uh, uh, our discussion this morning, then you know, there's no point wasting either of our times. I don't think. Um, did Did Jesus create human beings or the universe? C could you explain that? Do you I'm, I'm just puzzled by your book. What, what, are you, what are you interested in finding out? Are you trying to convince me to your point I, of view? I want to obey Jehovah God. I want to do the will of Jehovah God. Now, I think that the Father created the universe through his Son. Uh, I mean, am I, am I, am I right yes, in assuming? Yes, 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 yes. Uh, yeah, right. Uh, yeah. I mean, we, we, I've seen the term used as agent, and that sort of works for me. But, uh, yeah, we're just not... Not to get away from well, the, um, uh, the, the the main point that from the Father, Jesus said, the Father is greater than I am, 
and that, you know, there was a time when Jesus didn't exist. Well, you need so to prove that. But you need to prove that. It's no good saying that to me. I've spoken to many Seventh-day Adventists and Mormons and Pentecostal pastors. They can talk for hours, but they don't mm. quote the Bible in context. They paraphrase bits of the Bible out of context to prove what they've already decided the Bible ought to say. And you go around in circles with these people because they don't want to look at the Bible. They just want to stand back and paraphrase and throw a little little verse, part of a verse at you that's a sort of proof text for their position that you never actually open the Bible and examine the Bible. Now, you yeah. said that Jesus is, isn't, is, is God's agent in creation? Yes. Right. Where in your New World Translation does the text of your New World Translation say that? That Jesus is God's agent in creation? Agent, I don't well, 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 then, well, then why are you using the term agent? Well, I mean, um, you criticise... No, well, yeah, I, I mean... <laughs> OK, OK, look. Yeah. I mean, Robert, I just don't really get what you're trying to... It seems to me you're trying to convince me to your point of view. I, I, but, you know, I'm, I'm settled in, in what I... I mean, we, we fine, read the Bible an, all, an awful lot. Like, our, our whole meetings are built around study of the Bible. Um, this, this is not a new argument. You know, the Trinity doctrine goes back to early days. I mean, there's no mention of it in the Scripture. It's something that of got course it's it's on. it's it, it it's, a, it's a on non tri by... it's a non biblical concept invented exactly. by men yeah. in the fourth to the seventh century. But but so too is your theology. So too is Mormon theology. Everyone's theology is man made. If you say you're a pre-millennialist or you're a post-millennialist or you're Calvinist or you're Arminian or you hold to um, a Jehovah's Witness view that they're, they're, you know, 144,000 go to heaven and the great crowd live on the earth. All of these concepts were invented by men. Every single theological concept that's ever existed is the invention of men. And what you do is you, 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 you test... You know, I'm not talking about the Bible. I'm talking about theology. All theology is man-made. Judge Rutherford, in 1935, came up with the idea that 144,000 go to heaven and the great crowd live on the earth. That was never taught before 1935. The reason for that is that it is just as much a man-made concept as the Trinity of the 4th to the 6th century. And what you do okay, is you, well you, test, to, you test these us, concepts yeah. according to the Bible to see whether they're biblical. You don't simply yeah. say, my group teaches this. You don't question me in this because this is the truth. You know, how would you feel if, if somebody said the Trinity is true? Don't question the Trinity. It's the truth. You'd say that person's an idiot. They ought to be able to open their Bible and show you what what yeah. they believe about the trinity you can't just define the trinity as as right and everyone so, else so, is wrong uh, so which, which whose man-made concept then do you subscribe to well i i i think the trinity would be the most the most accurate um okay, well, uh, rather okay. than rather than aryan view because as i this is what puzzled me about your book and i've been at your book for many hours i mean i'm a very intense person i've been studying quite intently um your book is quite right on page 28 when it says jehovah created the universe and all life i mean i totally agree with that statement in your book but it, it's quite clear do you mind if i go to colossians 1 16 and 17 please no, no thank no. you um it seems to say here to me that jesus christ is the creator and paul uses every permutation of the greek language to say that christ is creator um the word other by the way is not in the greek text i've been on jw.org and your kingdom interlinear translation shows that the word other has been inserted into the new world translation text four times when it's it's not in the greek text so i'm reading from the new king james version and notice it says in every permutation of the Greek that Jesus is the creator. So, um, so it's talking about the son of verse 13, Jesus Christ. 
For by him, that's the son of verse 13, all things were created that are in heaven. That's actually heavens, it's a plural. And that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. Now listen to this. All things were created through him, that's the son of verse 13, and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things consist. To me, my understanding is that this is clearly saying that Jesus Christ is the creator. Uh, that's the way that I would I would see it, sir. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, okay. Not on his own, because creation is ek out of the Father. This is 1 Corinthians 8, 6. Um, 1 Corinthians 8, 6 says that creation is ek out of the Father, and then it's die, dear in the genitive sense. It's, it's through his Son. Creation is not out of the, the Son. It's out of the Father. The Father's the source of the creation. But then the Father creates through the Son. And I don't wish to complicate it, but elsewhere, Job 33, 4, and so on, it talks about the Holy Spirit creating. So, as your book says, Jehovah created the universe and all life on page 28, to which I say, Amen. I think that's a great statement in your book. Jehovah is the creator. Therefore, as Jesus is the creator, not alone, the Father is the source of that creation, and he then creates through Jesus. Uh, and Colossians 1, 16 and 17 clearly state that Jesus is greater, wouldn't that mean that Jesus is also Jehovah together with the Father and the Holy Spirit? Well, then how do you square it when uh, John 14, verse 28, Jesus says, I'm going to the Father, but the Father is greater than I am? All right, well, you've ignored my question, but I'll go well, to I, John 14, well, I 28. I haven't ignored it. I just, I just don't... <laughs> right. you know, it, it doesn't... Um, all right. Do you want me to address harmonise with with what um, other passages, you know, such as the one I just mentioned there, where, right. where Jesus plainly says that the Father's great. I mean, Jesus was dead in the tomb for three days, or well, parts of three days, and you, he was resurrected. Now, do you, do you want me to address John fourteen twenty eight? Well, yes, please. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you know which word is used here for greater in the Greek? Jesus would have spoken Aramaic, but John records this in Greek because it's a more accurate language. Do you know which word is used for greater here? Um, verse 28. Yeah. Let me just have a look. I've got to interlineate here. Uh, because the Father... Uh, well, in, in this kingdom interlineate, it says, because the Father greater of me is. Yeah, the, the Greek word that's used there. Do you know what that Greek word is? Uh, well, for greater, well, I can't pronounce it. I can it's see mesion. It. It's right. mesion, and it means rank position status because in John 14 28 Jesus is speaking here on earth when he humbled himself he didn't get rid of his deity he didn't cease being God but he chose not to use his higher status or higher position and his um, uh, when he was here on on earth he took a humble position now I can prove that because if you go to a parallel account in Matthew where Jesus compares himself to Jonah and to Solomon, he uses the word greater, but it's a different Greek word for greater. I'll just read it. John, sorry, Matthew verse, chapter, Matthew chapter 12, verse 40 to 42. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh will rise up in judgment with this generation and condemn it because they repented at the preaching of Jonah and indeed a greater than Jonah is here. Now it's not the same Greek word as used in John 14, 28. This is Plyon 4118. Verse 42. The queen of the south, the queen of Sheba, okay, will rise up in the judgment with this generation and condemn it. For she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon, and indeed a greater Plyon 4119, a greater than Solomon is here. So when Jesus compares himself to um, Solomon and Jonah, Matthew's account records uses the word Plyon, which means better in nature, like you are Plyon than a dog. And a dog is better, is ply on better than a maggot. 
because a dog's a fairly intelligent animal. It can, um, it's loyal. Yeah. It, it can yeah. understand simple commands. It protects its owner. So a dog is better than, better in nature than a maggot. And you are better than a dog. And God is better than you. So the word plion means better in nature. And that's the word that's used to compare Jesus to Jonah and Solomon. Going back to John 14, 28, mesion means rank or position. It's used that way in Romans 9, 12, when we read that the older shall serve the younger. Um, sometimes I think in some translations, uh, such as the King James, it reads the elder shall serve the younger. So mesion refers to rank. If Jesus, if the father was better in nature, than Jesus, then Plion would have been used here. But of course, the Father is better in nature than the Son's humanity. But the Son has two natures. He's, he's God and he's man. And so, um, re re referring to the whole, re referring to Jesus' person, my Father is greater than I, refers to position, to rank, not to nature. By use of the word mesion. Wasn't Jesus accused by the Pharisees of making himself God? And he said, no, you know, he corrected them. God's you need son. to be um, pacific. Which verse are you talking about? And you're ignoring everything I've said on John 14, 28. Well, you're, because, you're now jumping well, on uh, to know, another uh, verse. Uh, as I said just a few minutes ago, I, I don't think there's much point to our discussion because... Well, we're not, not having a discussion. You're just throwing... Other. You know, we're not having a discussion. You're throwing zingers at me. Look, the well, verse that you tried to paraphrase no, is I, John 10.30. I, I responded to your phone oh. call to say that you had some questions. Yeah. I mean, but really, you know, uh, we're just, um, we're going to be at loggerheads. I, 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 you know, I mean, I'm sure you can, we can agree on that, uh, but we are going to agree. And, and so, really, you know, you're a busy man and so am I. So, you know, is there any further point to our carrying on? Because, um, you know, we, we're just going to throw, I mean, we can... We can look up scriptures, but you're going to have an answer, and I am, and, uh, you know... Well, you know, you didn't have an answer. What, what, what is your response to John... What's your response to John 14, 28? What is your response? Well, I, just, well, I, 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 you know, I, I feel that Jesus is acknowledging his fathers. Uh, I mean, he said, didn't he, about the time and the end. Nobody knows a day except the Father. Now, you know, if they are of equal rank and standing and substance and everything else, then what Jehovah knows, Jesus knows. But he, but he said that he doesn't know the day or the hour of um, Jehovah's day. So, you know, but they, but they just clearly are not. Uh, Jesus was asked again, a good teacher, someone called him, he said, no one's good but the Father. So all the time he is directing honour to his father. I mean, to have a relationship where you describe it as father and son, well, you know, the father's the senior in that arrangement. Everything points to Jesus being in a, a secondary position, you know, uh, the second most important person in the universe, if you like, but a separate entity. And you're not going to convince me otherwise, Robert. No, clearly, I'm not going okay. to convince you. So, okay. you know, I don't really want to... Uh, carry on just just arguing and debating okay. because okay. you know that's something that the apostle paul said we shouldn't get into anyway debating where about words which where where does paul say that i'm part of an organization that preaches the good news in all the inhabited earth for a witness before the end comes now we are very successful in that our website has over 1,000 languages that you can read it in now if that isn't god's holy spirit in action i don't really know what is and i can't see any other organization uh, comparable to this that is preaching uh, about the kingdom I mean Church of England and all the others have just forgotten about that or they teach that Jesus is coming again in the person which he isn't the kingdom is in the heavens it will extend its authority over the earth it will break up the works of the devil there will be survivors there will be those that are baptised and recognise uh, Jehovah as God and Christ as his son now don't, don't really, uh, you know, if, 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 if we're not going to sort of, we're, ne we're never going to uh, line up on that. So really, I think that's, I'm okay. going to have to be the end of our conversation. Okay, so well, nice. 
with reluctance, I'll, I'll leave but... chapter seven. I do have another question on lesson 13. Uh, look, I've been at your book for hours. Could we just, could I just read paragraph two on page 55? It, it, it's lesson 13, please. I've been at this for hours. Uh, okay.